Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream. This time from my laundry slash dungeon slash hobby room going on today. We have some fun stuff planned. I've seen a lot of comments both on the streams and on Facebook and uh, Twitter and everywhere else. That people are posting up their awesome miniatures. Um, a lot of interest seems to be had about how do you paint the bases? What are some of the techniques? What are some ways to approach these? So I thought it'd be fun today if I just primed up four bases and we just kind of went to town. So my goals today are to show you guys kind of a standard base, how I paint my bases for my miniatures, which is very like classic New York City street. Um, I've seen a couple of cool inspiration things that people have done where they've actually done like an asphalt effect on some of the bases to make them look more like a street versus a sidewalk. So I'm gonna show that one too. I'm kind of gonna explain like some ideas behind that. And I thought we'd get a little crazy. I wanted to show a couple of different like off world approaches. So yes, they are very much based um, on like a New York City street or like a, a general like earthen Terran city. Um, but with a little bit of color choice and a little bit of creativity, I think that the, you can really like expand the universe in terms of where these bases are coming from just by thinking about some different textures and techniques and stuff like that. So we're going to get a little wild in those. We'll see how those turn out. I didn't do any prep work beforehand like always, so we're just going to play this by ear. So with that said, let's get this screen off of my lovely face and let's get it on to our workstation. So I have my four bases here um, all primed up and we're just going to get started on um, the classic NYC base. So... This is the way I paint my bases. You'll notice whenever I show off my uh, miniatures, you know, I like to really go for a very classic, just like concrete gray. And one of the reasons that I really like to do that is because if you know anything about color and light, right? Uh, light colors reflect light, dark colors absorb light. So by um, using a lighter color on my base, I'm actually giving a little bit of an undershadow to my miniatures, so I'm, I'm bouncing light back towards them, and this makes them really pop off the base. Whereas when you do really dark bases, you can do that, but you have to know that your miniature itself is gonna get kind of darker. It's gonna dim down because it's not gonna have that light reflecting off of those light colors on the base. So, for that, for that reason, this is kind of my favorite way to, to do the bases on these miniatures because I want the colors to be really poppy. I want it to be very comic booky, so the light colors allow me to do that. Um, when approaching kind of these these bases like like this it's very simple so i start with the zenith prime which we've talked about a lot uh, so i spray the base or the whole miniature because usually i just glue the miniatures on the base i don't typically paint the bases separate um, with a dark coat like a black or a gray and then i do a zenith prime of just a lighter gray on top and so this gives me some nice variation and you can kind of already see how this base could really be considered done um, if I wanted to, I could just do some quick washes, dirty it up a little bit, do the metals, and, and call it good. Um, but I found that uh, the priming base grays that I have, I don't quite like as much. Um, so I like to use um, some grays with a little bit more color in them. So the two colors that I'm going to be using today are Rainy Gray from Scale 75. And I'm going to use some Miskatonic Gray, which is a nice lighter gray. So you can see how these kind of have a bit of... Um, a bit more of a tone to them. This one's got a little green in it. Um, this one looks like kind of a lighter shade of that. It's got a little blue in it. So these are the ones that I like to build up and off of. Um, so really what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to start by finding my poker stick, which I just had because i got to open up this paint bottle. So I'm going to start with the rainy gray. And I'm going to just do a really quick... Um, base coat of the rain gray on the gray itself. So I'm just going to loosen up my paint really quick. hope everybody had a really great weekend. For those of you guys who are in the States, I hope you had a wonderful Memorial weekend. Um, I know mine was particularly pleasant. We had a good time and just kind of hung out and chilled. Watched some good TV on the tubes because it was very rainy here yesterday. Um, in Seattle, which was, you know, not quite as cool, but that's all right. So that's what you get when you live here. Beautiful days during the week, rainy days on the weekend. Okay, so you can see I'm just like laying down a quick base. Um, I'm going to let this dry. We're going to move on to the next one. Well, this goes on. So there you go. Quick and simple, quick base. I'm going to go to this one. So this one we're going to do um, what I've seen some people do. It looks really cool. We're going to do a black asphalt. And we're going to do like concrete curbs. So this one would really look more like, um, a natural city street, right? Most city streets have the two tonality of the black asphalt, 
Um, some of them do have concrete streets, and we did take inspiration from some of those older builds. Um, but modern day streets, black asphalt, concrete, sidewalks. So I'm just going to use my base color again, because I'm going to use the same kind of concrete texture. And I'm just going to knock out this little curb where the sidewalk starts. Because I have it on my palette and I need to wait for the other one to dry. So this will be a quick way to do it. I'm just going to hit all around the edges. Now, there's always a question, like this little ridge right here, do you paint it, do you not? I don't. I, I just black it out because, like, if you think about it logically, the sidewalk would continue on, so why would this be gray? Um, so I like to just do it as a black, so. All right. So now I got my base coat down. I'm going to grab my asphalt color. Um, and for this, we're just going to use flat black. So... This is a really like neutral kind of black going on. And where did I put that poker stick? There it is. I guess I put it so far away from me. There's a lot of problems here. Oh yeah. Just gonna poop some of this out on the palette. I'm just gonna go to town on this. And we're just gonna start getting that black on there, so. And really, I probably could have gotten away with not doing the Zenith Prime on this base, but I did it, so whatever. I'm okay with it. It just means that I have this step to go. But if I just kept it like a darker kind of base, I probably could have gotten away without even having to do the black. And that's just a decision that you can make. But we just want this to be a nice... Going like that, and you can already see how we're getting this really big differentiation between the black and the light. And we're gonna, of course, build up some stuff, and I'm not being too careful about. It. So, all right. Now, so that one's done. We'll go back to this. This one's still drying a little bit. I'm just gonna hit it again, really quick. Get it nice and solid. You're going to want really solid base coats when you do this um, because you're going to go back and you're going to wash it. We're going to do a little dry brushing and stuff just to pick up the colors. Like I said, if you Zenith Prime, you can definitely use more wash techniques to just block out the colors. And uh, that's definitely an option. I'm just showing you the way that I found that I like to do it um, because it just works for me and I like the the total effect that I get off of the miniatures but there's a lot of different ways to do this okay so we're gonna let that dry but you can see we have the flat gray base I'm gonna move over to this one so for this one we kind of want to talk about you know how do we go off world with this um, how do we make this look kind of interesting and, and unique and weird so my idea here is that I want to do kind of a an homage to some like really dark imperial green marble and my idea here is that this could be used really like well used for Black Order which has been on my mind a lot lately um, because I finished painting them and Thanos is on his way um, and I've just been having a lot of fun with those characters so kind of thinking about the interior of like Thanos' spaceship right or um, some kind of like evil imperial throne room that dark kind of green marble little bit of effect where I'm gonna get alien and weird um, is one that I think would be pretty fun. So, to do that, I'm going to use this black, oh, come down in frame, black forest green, which is this really nice, dark, um, sinister looking green color. It's really rich and vibrant. We're going to dull that down a little bit with some washes and stuff. We're just going to play. We're going to have some fun and just see what we can come up with. And this is kind of the neat thing is like you can really experiment on these bases and um, kind of take them to the next level if you want to. So I'm looking at this green color. I'm going to do a little test on my thumb. So that's pretty vibrant. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dull it down with a little bit of that flat black. Because it fooled me. It looked a lot darker in the bottle than it did when it came out. And that happens from time to time. There we go. There we go. 
that's what we wanted here. All right, so do my little thumb test here. Now you can see how much difference we got in terms of the hue. Um, and so that's what we're looking for. So we're just going to smack this on really quick. Just get it slapped in there. Again, my inspiration is a little bit of like Imperial green marble, but I'm not looking to make Imperial marble. Um, marbling effects can be kind of tricky and tough to pull off, and this is from space. So I get a lot more like freedom, I think, in terms of like what I'm doing, and I just want to make it an interesting kind of texture. And something that I could do across an entire roster of characters, or a squad of characters, depending um, what was going on there. So. And I'm just blocking this out. And you'll probably notice that like this color is coming out kind of streaky and that's perfect. Like I might not even mess with that because at this point, you know, I've got that nice like stone striping going on. And part of that is thanks to how the paint has been thin and how it's applying. So normally I would probably have to do two or three base coats to get it really thick. Um, but this is actually working to my advantage. So I might just stick with this. Um, because the paint's a little loose and I've got that Zenith Prime going on, getting this nice little like streakiness to it. And so it's already looking kind of like this jade Imperial Marble Stone, so. Don't recall that one good. We're going to come back to this. So our normal city base looks like it's almost dry on the base coat. So we're going to move on to the next step. So the next step is really to create a wash to kind of tone this down. And I want that wash to be um, kind of a mixture of black, brown, and blue. Um, so looking for kind of a dirty, grimy, what you'd expect to see in the city kind of stuff. Um, where did my bottle go? Oh, it's down here. So what we're going to wind up using is we're going to use a little bit of this chestnut, which is kind of a ruddy red, red brown. Um, then I'm going to use some black ink, which is right here. I'm going to use the black ink. And I'm going to use just a dot of cyan to it. Um, and I want to mix that around until I kind of I get this greenish gray mixture and stuff. Um, and I'm going to use, of course, I'm going to use my friend, my little glaze medium to get it thinned out a little bit and spread it out. And then you can see it on my palette here. So there was my green that I mixed. So this is what I want right here. See kind of how that has this, you see it on that white, pull it down here. So you can see how it's it's pretty gray, but it's got a little bit of tinge of like, you know, um, it's got a tinge of that that blue and a little bit of that brown. You can use some green in it. Um, so any kind of color you want, you just kind of want to like take it down and mix it to your own kind of specifications and how you feel good about it. And we're just gonna take it and we're just gonna like slap it on. I'm gonna be pretty pretty generous with it and pretty like rough. Um, because I want, I want to have like some pooling. So mostly it's a, it's a small, like it's a smooth surface. Um, but I want this wash to kind of pool in certain places. And I might even like take some extra water and like dot around and stuff. Because I want that kind of natural concrete, you know, where like grime builds up, where stuff might pool oil, that kind of stuff that will change the colors. Um, and so you can kind of just let it be natural. This is not the fun thing about painting kind of these bases and stuff is that you're not really looking for really clean, precise colors. You're looking for more of that natural roughness. So something like that, or it's really just gross and grimy and gritty and yuck. Um, and then I'll go to this one. I'll just kind of slather this on really quick. 
because obviously I want it to kind of match. So there we go. And I'll just take the brush and dot some of it away and put some of it back. But I'm not looking for evenness and I'm not looking for like uniformity. I'm just looking for more of that natural, like more of that natural sense that's going on. So there we go. Got that going on. So we're good there. I'm going to let those washes dry and this is why I figured I'd do four of them because I knew that I'd have some downtime. Well, we wait for paint to dry. Um, and I'm gonna move on to this one. And so this one I thought we could do a little cosmic-y too. Um, this one's a little easy to cheat on though because it's metal and brick. So kind of what I'm gonna look for here, I'm gonna grab some of the colored metallics that I like. And I think we'll do kind of a blue-purple. I'm going to take this one. So I'm going to take the Cobalt Alchemy, which is this kind of teal blue color, which I found really fun to work with. And I used a lot of my Guardians. I'm going to use this to apply to the grate. So I already see how that already has changed the entire nature of where this thing might be located in the world. Again, one of the one of the challenges with like this specific base is that you want to be really smart about what characters you use it on and stuff like that because if you do a really dark kind of grimy street metal, which obviously is what it's based on, you know, and in terms of like our real city worlds, um, you're going to wind up like I talked about before, with light being absorbed really heavily into the base. So you're not going to get that kind of refracted um, bounce back like under lighting. So make sure that when you put characters on this, you either want them to be kind of sinister and dark. So like your red skulls could go on here, depending on how you painted them. Sometimes you can get too dark. There is such a thing as too dark. Um, but you know, you're really poppy like Spider-Man you may not want to put on this base because you're going to dull some of the effect down as that light is absorbed into the base. Um, so it's just thinking about kind of how those compositions work and stuff. And because you always get a big selection of bases with every character pack, you don't even have to use this base if it happens to not be the one that you like the best or um, if it is the one that you like the best, then you know, you can go with that too. Okay. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to grab some of this Nakar, which is kind of the sandstone-y color. Because I don't want to do red brick. Red brick would be too, too Terran. So we're going to just play with the bricks a little bit too. And I like this color as kind of a neutral base to work from. A little bit of stone elements to it too. I'm just going to quickly kind of apply some of this color of the bricks. I'm not really looking for a solid base coat. I just kind of want to bring up some highs and some lows. Again, natural formations so I can be a little splotchy and it's okay. It's a very different terrain. Painting and stuff is a very different art form than painting like a miniature um, because you have like all this natural this naturalism that you want from it and nature isn't isn't very perfect not in the way that humans want it to be perfect anyway nature is perfect in its chaos it's got all of these different like tones and these different patterns and you, know, you get like fractals and stuff going on so you can be really kind of dirty and sloppy in a way that you would never do on anything else. All right. So, let's see, our washes are still drying, so let's go to this guy. Okay, so we can see we've already kind of got like a really good start going on here. 
Um, so what I want to do, so I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the Surfer Org Green, which is, you know, kind of a almost a turquoise. And I just want to like build up some fun um, patterning and texture on this base. And like I said, I'm kind of kind of thinking that it's a stone or a marble um, kind of look, but I'm also just going to play and let let things go the way they want to go. So I'm going to put some of that out. And I'm going to mix a little bit with my base color to start. Just to build up a nice change of pace here. Okay, so I'll show you what we got. So there's kind of our initial color. Here's our new color, which you can hopefully kind of see has got more of that teal in there. More of that turquoisey color going on, so. So, I'm going to use that, and I'm just going to play. I'm thinking about how to apply this, I think. I'm going to try. I'm going to try this. So I'm just going to take some paper towel. I'm going to kind of like rough it up a little bit. You could do this through like stippling and stuff too. What I want is that really like or blister foam, if you had blister foam lying around, which I don't think I do. Um, perfect. So I'm just gonna dot the I'm just gonna dot the paper in like that, and I'm just gonna kind of like I'm just gonna stipple in a way, but with the paper towel, which gives me a really uneven rough kind of surface and so you can kind of start to see how that color is coming through a little bit. You can do like battle damage this way, you can do dirt this way. Um, a lot of really solid options so you start to see how that's bringing a bit of life into there. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to pull some more. I'm going to rough it up. You want to make sure that there's not a ton on, on the paper. Because you really want it to just be a little like, a little sense. Again, it's just like stippling except instead of using the brush I'm trusting I'm trusting the roughness and the, the randomness of the paper towel because again I want this to be kind of natural. I want it to be not like a human did it. So you can see how we're building up those highlights a little bit. And if I really want to I grab my brush and come in like you could stipple it with just a brush too, that works. You know, like a rough kind of polar brush. Okay, and now I want to build up a lighter color because this will dry pretty quick since we're not using a lot. I'm going to take more of that surfer orc. And then I'm going to mix it with some of this Caribbean blue, which is like just the next level of turquoise kind of going on. Now I want to build, uh, like, I want to blow out these highlights by quite a bit, so, like, I'm really looking, I'm really looking for some brightness, because I can always, I can tone it down with some green, with some green ink and some wash. And I'm just kind of, like, playing with what we got here. Get that in there. And I'm just like getting rid, oh, can you see that? I'm just getting rid of a lot of my excess paint on this towel. So that I don't wind up with really huge splooches. Because that'll ruin the effect. I want this to be kind of like subtle. I 
until I build it up enough. So now you start to see we got a little bit of like some heavy, some heavier spots than I would have wanted, but that's okay. I can fix those later if I need to. And honestly, by the time that I put the green glaze over, it might not be even a problem. I'm going to go back in with my brush. And this is fun because you just get to stab it. Here's like stab. Stab away. Don't do this with like a good brush because the brush doesn't last very long. You just destroy the brush. This is my this is my trusty dry brush though, so it's basically already destroyed. Um, grab a little bit of white. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of purity white right here and adding that to my mix just to lighten it up more. I'm just doing progressive like successive layers and building up my colors until I'm happy with it. And you can kind of go as far as I want with it. Just go back in and start stabbing again. So there, so now we've got this nice, like, uneven, kind of stony texture going on. So to kind of mimic that marble idea that I was talking about, grab my brush, grab my lighter colored paint here, and I'm just going to come through and I'm going to find, like, some of these, some of these spots. I'm just going to kind of draw some quick spider webbing. Again, I'm not going to go crazy on this because it's a base. There would be a miniature standing on top of it. I just kind of want to get some of that, some of that idea, some of those quick like little veins going on. If I go too heavy, I can always take my scrubber brush and kind of pull it out. You want your paint to be pretty thin when you do this, so you want it almost to be like kind of a pen ink. It'll help you draw easier. Get away with a lot of stuff when you have your little scrubby brush. It's such a huge useful tool. Just letting the brush hit where I want. I might even go back and like do a little bit of if the line isn't like perfectly connected, it's okay because what I'm really looking for is like that thin kind of line going on. So you see we're getting some of those veins and stuff in there. Let them pop a little bit. Come down here. Do a little bit down here. So this is where you can really just zen out and like spend way too long on a base. 
but this just means that when we get back to it, Okay, so we've added some like veining and some nicks and scratches in there. It's looking pretty fun and cool. So we lost a little bit of that green luster. So we need to maybe bring that back. We need to get some of that vibrancy back. Because now we've got like this nice stone going on, so we want to go to polish. So I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of pure white. Purity white with just a titch of my normal color in there. And I just want to do some like really, really crazy blowouts. I'm just trusting that my, my glaze that I'm going to do to kind of bring the green back to this thing is going to help and put this back together so that white is not going to look quite as outrageous as it might seem right now because we're going to tint it back to the green side. Now I can feel this thing coming together in a way that I really am digging. straight line you can see it gotta let that and you know, let that tremor that everybody naturally has come in kind of like play out oh come on there you go all right so there we go so now you can really see that kind of like thing going on here So we've really added in kind of that life, that marbling style effect. So we're going to grab our, what do we want? I'm going to grab our straight green ink. So this is just intense green, but a straight green ink. I'm going to mix up some of this, and I think we're going to have our first base done here in a moment. Um, I would also, if I had access to some, which I don't at the moment, um, I would definitely consider putting like a gloss medium in this. Do I have a gloss medium? Oh, I might have a gloss medium. Hold on. Uno momento. Matte varnish. No. Oh, I really thought I had a gloss. I guess I don't. Wait, here we go. Gloss varnish. Perfect. Because I want this to have some luster to it, and I kind of want to get that reflective surface, I'm actually going to pull out the gloss varnish. So I almost never use gloss varnish because that's like crazy. Um, but the gloss varnish is going to give us that nice like sheen. And the big thing with gloss varnish is to just control it. So you want to make sure that you don't go over it. I'm glad the, geolo ge the geology nerds out there, whoops. The other thing that you really need to make sure is that you use an unused palette well and not the palette well that had your uh, metallic green in it. Ha <laughs> ha! Or your metallic blue. Although we did make a really cool color. 
feel like I need to use that somewhere now. Okay. A little bit of glaze medium, some gloss medium. Beautiful. My geology nerds are getting in there, telling me what kind of rock this actually looks like. It's space rock, man. That's all I promised. I just promised space rock. And we're just going to go over it really quick. You see how that tints down some of that color? Brings back some vibrancy to it. And gives us that little bit of sheen that we were looking for. What I want to do is I just want to push it out of the cracks and the crevices. Kind of like that. So I'm going to go back through. And I'm going to get those down. All right, there we go. So, we'll let that dry, and we'll come back and check on it a little bit. We might add a little bit of darkness to it. Um, we're definitely going to go back through and, like, black line those lines and stuff. Okay. Let's go back to this guy. So, he's almost done. I'm just going to wipe out some of these lines. So, we have all this nice, like, crazy, like, speckling and stuff. And I totally, like, pulled some of the ink off, so now I've got these nice little, like, rings and stuff. All of that would normally be terrible on a miniature, but we're, we're good to go. So we're going to go back through and we're going to grab our rainy gray. And we're just going to do some dry brushing. And again, you could stipple this, you could dry brush it. I'm going to kind of just, you know, get rough and ready with it. So I'm just going to come back through. I'm just going to start bringing up some of those highlights again. Because so what I want is I want that I want that wash texture to kind of be subdued underneath. So like it's down in there. It's still there. But that's not the, it's not on the surface, right? So just kind of going to build that up. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go back, grab some of my Miskatonic Gray, which I said we'd use. I'm going to use that for another highlight. Just another dry brush layer. Mix a little bit of it together. And I'm just looking for like different kind of values and colors that will build up on each other and kind of make some natural some natural looking patching and some stone and stuff. So I'll just come through. You can, like I said, you can really have fun with this. You can just play until you're happy with it. You can take it as high as you want. But you can see now how we have like these nice little natural patches where you know, for whatever reason, this stone didn't get stained or it got stained by something that, that bleached it, whereas this stone is darker and this stone is around. Um, and that's, that's kind of like the goal. The goal is to really create natural variations in your colors. And again, nature doesn't work in like perfect lines. It doesn't work. Nature hates straight lines. So the rougher and the less patterning there is to it, the more natural your results is gonna look. Even something like a city street, now you can see that I'm just kind of like stabbing in some really bright light colors to get some extra texturing in there. And to really like give it life and like bring it up. And those little nicks and scratches and scritches. Give it that official stonework texture. There. So now you can see how we got all that cool stuff going on. And now I gotta go back to this curb over here. What we said we were gonna do. 
I'm gonna get really rough with this because I got some of the black in there, but I don't care. We're just gonna like, we're just gonna make it all work for ourselves. That's just how we do it. There, got some lighter stuff going on. Okay, so back to this one. We're running out of time. We'll see what happens. See if we can finish. I don't know. Nothing else. We'll get we'll get pretty close. So I want to do I want to darken up these lines, and then I'm going to do this in a steel. So we're just going to pick a really dark steel because I don't want to spend a lot of time on like highlighting or anything. So I'm just going to use black metal, which is a color that I've used several times before. And it's kind of like a nice dark steel. I'm just going to carefully lay it in over that grate. And then I'm going to do, I just dive in to where the grate holes are, because I don't care. And I'm going to hit this with like a dark wash anyway. So there, we got our grate done. Now what I want to do is I'm going to grab some black ink and I'm going to make a nice little like thicker glaze and I'm going to add a little bit of black to it, like actual black paint. Uh, I'm going to use this for all my lining. The reason that I like using the black ink mixed with a little bit of black paint is it makes the paint flow really nice. You get a little bit of translucency, which is good. Because um, I still want some of that gray to show through. I don't want it to be like a comic book black line. Although you could definitely do that if you want to make your, your base look a little more comic book. You just do some really hard black lines. I'm just going to go through. And the nice thing about having that ink and that paint mixed together is that it flows really nice. So... I can draw really quick and really easy. I just want to get all these little cracks and pop them out really nice. If I make a mistake, quick little rub of the thumb. Take that right off. Just get there. Then come in here. I'm just going to hit these little holes. I'm going to want to come over here and I like to do a line across the curb which really helps kind of divide it from the street because I'm using all the same color here. I'm going to come in and kind of like get that little crack to darken it up, touch it with my thumb just to pull some of that off, get the crack over here. wipe with the thumb. Now if I really want that to pop I can come through with say some thrash metal. Woo. Do a little Ric Flair woo. Nope that one's not open. Not you thrash metal. We'll use heavy metal. Yeah that one's open. Might just do a tiny bit of highlighting really quick run over the side just to make that pop. There we go. All right, so there we go. That is what I would call a finished city base. There are some extra steps that you can take. Like we could take some brown inks um, and we could make little dirt pools and we could just make the thing a little dirty. Like let's say we take our 
our brown ink, for example. I'll show you this really quick because I do want to hop on to some of the other ones too. And thin it out really good. So you want to get this ink pretty, pretty thin. And then what you can do is you can kind of take it and you can create little like puddle stains and just kind of like give some life back to it, some color. This can work really well for like giving color. You just want to make sure that it doesn't heavily pool anywhere and you want to kind of be erratic with it again. This is a stain, so, you know, just kind of like tap the brush and let the water run where it wants to run. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. And you can like pull it with the brush, just get really dirty with it, kind of get some life color back into it. And you can do that as much as you want with different colors or stuff like that. You could add a red balloon floating up from the grate for sure. I'm not going to have time to show you that one on this one, but... That's it. So last but not least, you know, go around with your black paint, edge it black, complete that for the whole thing, and there you go. There's your base. So a really quick and easy way to do that. So that would be my kind of like go-to city base technique where you can see like you got a lot of grays and stuff going on. So let's move over and let's go to our asphalt base. So again, we kind of did the same thing here. Um, on the sidewalk, exact same technique. So I can just come in here with my colors and kind of darken this up come over here. But then what I need to do is obviously I want to um, lighten up my asphalt just a little bit and then the big trick is going to be to add like a really big kind of point of highlight something that really draws the eye because this is going to be so dark um, so the easiest way to do that it's obviously again a kind of dry brush um, using a bit more of like a neutral gray or like a blue gray like i would probably use this abyssal blue and then i would just go through and kind of bring up my colors a little bit, which is now wet because I just ran my brush over it, but that's okay. So I'm just kind of go through. What I'm going to do on this is I'm going to do a little two brush blending just to show you a different technique of how to do it. So I would take my, my blues, and this is like a nice little dark blue because most asphalt kind of shines blue in the light. I build up that color, and I would take my black. I kind of just mix the two together, wet on the base itself to get kind of some nice textures and tones and some good blends. This can be really fun too. Plus I'm looking for like not quite uniformity. So kind of do that. A little bit more blue in there. A little bit more black, a lot more black, so you can see how wet that is right now, but then I could hit that with a black wash if I wanted to, just to kind of like tone it down a little bit, I might get some like brighter colors in there. I'm looking for a pretty flat, kind of dark asphalt color. So now we have that asphalt and that curb. And the big thing is, is that we want to bring it up just a little bit more. Um, but kind of the big trick is going to be adding something that really like makes it pop. And in this case, what I would do is a yellow, I would do like a yellow road line. Um, to really give it kind of that like that jump. I don't know if it's going to dry in time for us to get there, but we'll see. Um, but flat, like just kind of going from the hip, you could call that done and be 
be pretty happy with it, just black line it a little bit. I would go back and dry brush it a little bit with a lighter um, gray black. Let's go back to this guy. So he's almost dry. Let's see, we've got a little bit of this glaze that pooled on us. We can just fix that. So there we go. So what I would do to finish this bad boy off, just go back to my black mixture that I use to line the normal city base. Just get it in here. Let's get those two going. And then I would put it in the cracks too, just to help accentuate those breaks in the stone without taking away that green color. That's really going to sell it. There we go. I could do another like green pass over that. If I felt like the cracks were a little too black, I can go back through and kind of smooth that out using some of my green color and stuff like that. Just take away some of it with a wet brush. That's a little less dark. Um, you can play a lot of different ways. But as that dries, it's going to mute out, and it's not going to be quite as potent as it looks like on the camera. Then otherwise, it gives us that nice, like, split. So there's kind of like some cosmic green stone off of what most people would consider a city base, but with just some different color choices and some different plays. You can wind up with something that looks very different and very cosmic and ethereal. We quite get to this guy, but next steps here. How long, long do I got? I got eight minutes. I can do this. We can do it. I tell you. Um, so I'm gonna grab some violet ink, violet, as in you know, kind of purpley. The V in Viv. Thin that out a little bit. Run this over my metal. Ooh, that's still pretty potent. Thin it out more. Play a little bit with that. Get that color in. So I have this nice, like, black steel going on. Maybe grab a little bit of cyan maybe. And just kind of like patch it out a little bit so it doesn't quite go as crazy. And if we wanted to get really crazy on like the bricks we could go back to our green and just make it really ugly, really cosmic-y. Toss some of that in and let it mix up with that purple. That going on. Now we've got like some really wild colors going. I mean, I don't know where this is from, but it definitely doesn't look like it's, you know, from Earth. And we could play with that a bit more. Pull these purples out a little bit. Or even go back and go back to that really stark. And we can just go really crazy here. Go super purple. Why not? And dry brush that blue back on. Some really crazy stuff. We could grab a magenta ink. Start throwing that in there. Just get a lot of like color tones. You have a magenta. It's crimson. It's not quite what we're looking for though, but why not? We're just having fun now. We're just going crazy. Thin that out. Come back in. Add some of that there. Get like some really wild colors going on. We can play with that. You can get some tonality, some wild like variations 
mixing those two together, pulling them back. So we wind up with like this really crazy space metal. go wild with that and then we can come back and do the bricks or whatever if we wanted to in different colors we could do them like white marble get that purple going on if we wanted to to make a match we can wipe most of that away if we want and just have them be kind of like tinted with the color there's a lot of things that you can do come back in and just tap with our Paper towel we've used a lot, and then you get that kind of like mottled tone, a little antiquing action. So, kind of like a really rough, rough and rushed um, version here. Maybe I'll come back and finish it someday, just to see what we can do out of this crazy, crazy mess. But playing with inks and like washes and colors and stuff and just kind of letting them run the way they want to run, you can come up with some pretty wild stuff. Whoop! It slides away. So, starship plating, some kind of deck things, and color shift paints, yeah. You got kind of that going on with the different colors and stuff, and you can just keep playing with it. But obviously, like, you could have some really fun Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Order kind of starship. Alien world stuff. You can really play with the bricks. Go wild on those with different colors and stuff. Okay. I think this is dry, so we're just going to hit this. So again, I would do... Oh man, I got three minutes. We can do this. We can do it! I believe in us. I'm going to use some Arctic Blue. And this is going to be a pretty poppy highlight, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to go back to my dry brush. I'm going to go to my, there we go, that will be good. Okay, we're just going to give a little bit of life to this asphalt. It's a really quick dry brush. I don't know why, but I love dry brushing. Like, I dry brush on a stop. It's so satisfying. All right, so that gave us a bit of life on our asphalt. And then, for the moment de triumph, we come in with some yellow. Maybe. Which yellow do we want to use? Marduk? Soul? I think we'll go with the soul yellow. This stuff looks like it'll be pretty good. This is kind of like the winner to this. So, somewhat decide where we want our road stripe to be. Slowly, but surely, build up our little line. And of course, this would take a lot more coats than I'll probably have time to show. This is kind of what sells it the most because it gives you that point of like color pop. It's not really green on the screen, but. I can assure you that it is yellow in my house. But you can see how adding that little bit of life to that green. Let's try this. Let's see if this goes better. This is a mustard yellow. show it better on camera I think and it has much better coverage than that other yellow because it's not trying to be as bright I'm 
Now you could do this with a white if you wanted to do a white line instead of a yellow line. I'm sure there's a lot of like city planner experts who are getting mad at me for using yellow because they're like, yellow lines want to appear here. I'd be like, well, I don't know. Just doing what I think looks fun. So you can play with that. And now you've got kind of this nice little pop line on that black. So when you put a miniature on it, it's gonna look even better because you're gonna have that point of like high to go with your low. You can build it up obviously, you can do the dash lines, you can do anything you want it. But there is an asphalt base with that. And look online, there've been a couple people who've done it way better than I have. Um, on the tutorial, but hopefully this gives you kind of the basis of how you would go about that. So with the grays, with the blacks, um, really fast, and then just picking out your kind of poppy, like road stripe highlight. And that's a very different look from kind of the go-to, what I would call my standard, the studio standard kind of base, where you just got the gray concrete on the gray concrete. Again, the really bonus to this one is that it provides that kind of under lighting because light is gonna refract off the brightness. Um, I probably would even take this one step further in terms of like what I'm doing here um, with another like highlight layer because I like mine to be really poppy and bright. Um, but you can see how that's just like your natural like city concrete look um, and really great. It's going to really make everything pop. And then of course, if you want to get off of earth, you can do that too. We could have done this with any of the ones that we just did, you know. Um, you could have a step, kind of stairs, all that stuff. You could tie everything together to make it look like a temple some kind of ornate kind of marble thing going on, stonework. Um, you could just get really crazy with it. You could add foliage, you could add all kinds of stuff, right? It's um, any kind of things that you kind of imagine you can really do with these bases because again, you know, walk away from human kind of construction materials, make them a little more fantastical, a little more bright and poppy, and you wind up with something that doesn't look like it's from Earth. And for the brightest and most poppiest of the things that we did in about three minutes, here you go. So some really crazy like purple steel. I feel like this is right off of like nowhere. Um, and you can build that stuff up too and just make it look really crazy and wild. So hopefully this really inspired you guys um, and kind of gave you some ideas on how you'd like to approach bases in the future. Whether that be the standard studio style, um, like this one. Woo! something more city with asphalt where you've got the black and the gray going on with some road striping something even fancier and more off the scales with some alien stonework some kind of um, wild and unnatural basing material or building materials imagine an entire squad on something like that more something that just screams color and pop brightness and uh, evokes the feel of 80s sci-fi i can't wait to see what you guys come up with as well um, so be sure to share all of your picks, all of your ideas. Again, I hope that was informative and helped with tutorials so that you now are equipped to go off um, and get ready to paint not only your own bases in a way that meets your needs best, maybe give some differentiation to your different squads if you want to do that as well, while using uh, the same bases that you have. And of course, you can always hobby your bases as well, um, covering up the detail that's on there with some kind of modeling putty and stuff. And maybe we'll show that in the future as well, how to just do your own thing um, utilizing the bases that come in the pack or what have you. Uh, of course, we've also got Thanos coming up with his throne, so hopefully uh, this has inspired you as well for how to treat those steps and that um, alien construction of the throne with its fancy metals and its stonework and all of that. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a great week. Look for Dallas 1 p.m. Thursday as he streams from home as well. Don't know what he has on the docket, but I'm sure it'll be very exciting and fun. And of course, be sure to stay tuned as we continue to move forward because June is going to be a big month because some inevitability is coming in the form of Thanos. Uh, be sure to check out all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hit us up. Talk to us. Let us know what you guys are working on. We love looking at it. Remember, the painting challenge is almost up for the month, so be sure to be sending in your submissions of your poppy color miniatures. Um, hopefully, this basing tutorial is giving you some ideas on how to make those colors pop even more. We look forward to seeing all that stuff, picking our favorites, showing those off to the community. Uh, as always, be safe, have fun. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a wonderful time. I will see you on the next one.